So the ETCS needs to have secure communications in levels two and three. So why does it need to be safe and secure? Well, I think we're all aware how easy it is for radio signals to be hacked, blocked or spoofed. How many fake emails do you receive in your email account or those funny phone calls offering you a, offers which are too good to be true? Because ETCS uses the radio system to transmit critical information to and from the onboard, it is really vital that we know that the messages get through, they're not corrupted, and only the correct messages are processed. So how are we going to keep the communication system secure? Well, the first stage is who can call who? In ETCS, it is now only the onboard which can originate a call. Since it is the onboard that needs to get the movement authority from the track side, and it, that is then used to allow the train to be moved, it is really important that nobody else can contact the onboard and give that information erroneously. The onboard gets instructions normally from police groups mounted in the track, which provide the number to be called or the IP address to be contacted. So this is the first stage in the security. Communications works in many layers, and there are two key layers used for ETCS. The lower layer is all associated with the radio link, the actual communications of the dots and dashes, bits and bytes, which enable the communication to be made. The onboard data modem is instructed by the ETCS to establish a call, and that is based on the area or network that the train is operating within. The onboard data modem will look for a trackside base station and then establish a link. And similar to your mobile phone, there has to be a SIM card in the data modem, which has to be recognized by the network you're trying to connect to. The higher layer, often called the application layer, is where ETCS information is actually flowing. Having got a communication over the radio, then the onboard attempts to contact the correct radio block center, part of the ETCS track side. And the application messages are exchanged with that block center using the lower transport layer. Now, if the messages were just sent, then nobody would know whether they were correct or not. So ETCS uses a system of digital signatures. That enables the recipient of any message to know that it has come from the correct person. In order to provide those signatures, every time an onboard contacts a new RBC, that's the radio block center, they use a shared secret key to generate a new session key. So each time the communication is undertaken, a new, completely different key is being used. Once a message is ready to be transmitted, then it is sent, passed through a process where the session key is used to produce a digital signature. When the message is received at the other end, then the recipient can take the same message. Oh, and by the way, ETCS messages are sent in plain text, so they are very easy to read. However, because of the use of this session key and the digital signature, they're very difficult to fake. So the recipient processes the same message using the session key that they've jointly created and then compares the result with the signature. If the signature matches, then they know that like, the message is OK. Now we're sending a lot of messages and it is important that they are received and processed in the right order. It's also important that we detect if a message is not received. Delays in the radio system and the system automatically retrying and attempting to resend messages can lead to them arriving out of sequence. So ETCS uses a series of timestamps. Each message which is transmitted 
is has a timestamp attached to it. That enables the recipient to confirm the sequence of the messages. If you get a older message after you've received a newer message, if you see what I mean, then you know it's out of sequence. It also means that you can confirm that you get a response to a message within a reasonable timescale. And you know from those timestamps whether the reply relates to the first, second or third message that you sent. Once the radio session has been established and the ETCS has made communication with the RBC, we need to keep the session going. It's actually very important that we keep that session available. We might need to send urgent information from the track side to the onboard. The modem in the onboard and the radio software continually monitor the connection. If the connection is lost, the onboard will attempt to re-establish that connection. And of course, as the train moves, the system is the train is going to be moving into areas of different base stations. So the system is always monitoring the strength of signals. And if it detects that the current base station signal is getting too weak, it will automatically swap to the strongest. Similarly to the modems and the radio system, the ETCS onboard is also looking to make sure that it's receiving messages and it keeps a track of when it has received them. If it doesn't receive messages for a given period of time, then it can do a number of things. It could be configured to apply the brakes automatically. It will automatically attempt to re-establish the safe communication session. And if no messages are received for a certain period, it will alert the driver. So we've established a session, we have provided it in a safe and secure manner, we have maintained it and we have been sending data. At some point, there will be no more need to send information. If the driver shuts down the train, that will automatically end the communication session. Similarly, if the train moves out of an area of ETCS operation or moves from one RBC to another, then the ETCS track side can instruct the onboard to end the session. So ETCS messages are safe and secure by design, and it is very hard to hack or spoof an ETCS session.